There's multiple paintings in this subject. One photo or one subject can become many paintings and it's worth just keeping that in mind. And it's not a bad exercise doing a series of thumbnails to see how many paintings you could get from just this one reference. The reflections are relatively soft, but I want enough colour to come through that you can see it in your painting. Just start by wetting the back of our paper. The sky is one of the hardest things to do in this painting and we'll need to work a little bit into it to make it work. So by wetting the back of the paper that gives us the time to work on the sky. Because we're going to be painting around the boats too and that makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, so we've got grey sky. Just a little bit of warmth. So this is the colour near enough to what I wanted for this area here. It looks very dark there, you know, compared to the photo you can see how much darker it looks. But really when we test on the paper you can see that it's, it's only about half the tone it should be. So I'm going to add more paint. And this is primarily cobalt blue and burnt sienna, with just the tiniest hint of the permanent rose. Uh, and you could possibly get away without even using the permanent rose. And that's better. I don't have to go as dark as what's in the photo, however, so I can make that judgment call. That'll do. Put that one there. I'm going to have just a very weak head orange. Now 
I might just mix an even weaker mixture here. And remember, until you start painting, the clock doesn't start. This mixture here is a light, slightly warm grey mixed with cobalt blue, a little bit of the Winsor & Newton Cad Orange. If you don't have Winsor & Newton Cad Orange, you're probably safer to go with raw sienna, right? Because the Winsor & Newton Cad Orange is that yellowish orange. If you've got Art Spectrum, for instance, their Cad Orange is a, a reddish orange and it doesn't work the same way. But in my case, I've used some of the orange, a little bit of the cobalt blue, but because, of, remember I said the Winsor Newton Cat Orange is a slightly yellowish orange, which means when you mix cobalt blue with it, it you end up with a slightly greenish tinge to your grey. So that's why I added just a hint of the permanent rose. And I want to give myself plenty of time to do this sky. It's a lot of subtle shapes. So I want to be able to lift colour and add colour, hopefully without resorting to having to use the spray bottle. So let's start with this. And I'm just playing with my patterns here. transition.
Now we've got to be a little bit careful. So I'm just establishing that edge and then painting away. And even though I've wet the back of the paper, I st you still have to paint reasonably quickly. That's why you've got to take the time to mix all your starting colours and come back here and just add some more paint to this leading edge. Just picked up some of this cat orange with a little bit of this grey, warmish grey. I'm going to paint that. Again, I don't want to lose all the white, but I sort of want a combination of soft edges and hard edges. You might want to mask these sails, it, it'll make it easier on you. And I work to keep this leading edge wet. Adding a little bit of permanent rose into the orange and grey mixture. Just break up this shape a little bit. 
And then I want some darker shapes here, just to help balance this dark from over there. Now I've got to really watch this. This section here has lost its shine, right? So it's really dangerous. If I go in with too much paint in my brush, I'll definitely create a cauliflower. So what I do, I pick up the color, then I drag the brush through my palette to take most of the water out, and then I tap it on a towel, and that takes out the bulk of that paint. And then very lightly, I'll go in, hardly touching the paper, otherwise instead of creating a cauliflower, I'll create mud because it'll disturb the paint underneath. And that's probably one of the hardest brush marks you, you can make. Now, this orange is a bit too orange. I'm going to go in and lift some highlights out of it. And I want this cloud here to come back a bit. So I just clean my brush squeeze all the moisture out and then very lightly or sometimes not so light lift some of that paint Now here, I'm purposefully creating a cauliflower because I wanted a little bit more of this color over here. And you can see how it's creating a cauliflower, but it's only in a controlled area. And I'm just using this to help move some of the other paint away. Then once it's been sitting there for a while, I'll get my clean brush with all the moisture squeezed out and I can lift the cauliflower sections out. And that gives me some more of this cloud shape that I was after. And with a color that's a bit closer to what I've got over here. Do it again. I want this to come up here a little bit. So this is one of those times where knowing how a cauliflower is produced, you can go ahead and you're, you're pre-warned what's gonna happen like that. The cauliflower itself is pushing the other paint away. Once I get the shape I'm after, go in and lift it out. Whereas if I just kept dropping in the weak orange mix with just a little bit of water in it, instead of pushing the paint away, it would have just changed the color of the mixture. Now I'd like to bring this down here a little bit more.
Oh, I, here I dropped some water, so I'll just have to fix that. And as long as you do it while the cauliflower is still fresh, then it's really easy to fix. Okay, and that's good enough for the sky. This hill in the distance, if I go in with some thick paint, I can get a nice soft edge. Let me clean part of my palette. And I'll put some of that paint here, and then I'll add some French ultramarine, just a little bit of the permanent rose and some burnt sienna, but mainly blue. A little bit stronger. So it's like a barely blue grey colour, I suppose I'd call it. So we'll just paint that in. So I want this distant hill to be just a soft edge. And it's just one of those things you can you can do at this point. Otherwise you have to wait till it dries and then re-wet this bottom bit or just have a hard edge. I like a softer edge. Just adjusting a few of these harder edges. And some of these edges you can adjust later with a barely damp tissue if you want to. We've got a light grey colour, which is just French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And then there's a tiny amount of this red. Scarlet Lake will do for that. I don't need a lot. We've got some nice yellow. This is one of those times where I would clean top of the colour because I want a, a nice bright yellow. Cad yellow will do for that. the blue. This is just some cerulean and a little bit of cobalt blue.
the colours in this scene contrast with the greyness of the sky and that's what makes them interesting. So I've put that little kink in there because the sail is obviously flapping around. And then there's some creases in it, so I'll just get some pure scarlet. And just drop some of that in. And it's a little bit duller on this side than here. So I'll pick up a little bit of this grey that I've got. Uh, maybe let's get some more blue. There's some French ultramarine. And we have to let that sit there and let it dry. We're going to lift some of this up here just to give that sail a little bit of a shine in part. While that's drying, I'll work on these other boats so I don't mind the pink for that one in the distance. And I'm just using the, the permanent rose, just the dirty pink that I have sitting on top. And it's got a dark sail, so just some French ultramarine, burnt sienna. Just any dull grey colour for the hull. We can go back and adjust these later. and figures we'll worry about later as well. They're not that important. Okay, that's still not dry yet. Let's work on this sail. Now, in this case, this red sail in the back isn't showing through this yellow in the foreground. Maybe a hint of it, but not very much. Not anything to worry about. Pick up some of my cad yellow.
I forgot to erase the horizon line. And then while that's wet, we've got a couple of things. There's a, there's a shadow here, brighter passage and some crease lines. So this is a yellow. We want to dull that. Maybe a bit of French ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna. This is thicker paint, not as much water. I don't want it to flow down. I don't, don't want to lose that little bright patch there. In fact, I might just lift a little bit of color. This to be darker. and we can do the blue of this one. I can't do this red here because it would bleed into the yellow, so I have to let that dry. More water. See, I was painting that and noticing that my, I was getting more dry brush effects and that was just telling me that I didn't have enough water in my mixture. Lift some of that, nice little highlight. And there's dark shadows there, so I'll add a bit of French ultramarine, tiniest bit of burnt sienna into that mixture. I'm just going to hit this little spot here with heat just to dry it. But I don't want to dry it that much that I have to re-wet the back. Okay, so now we can work on, on this sail here. So if we look at the grey, you can see through the sail. So we have to paint this in such a way that you can see the spinnaker on the other side. And it's really just burnt sienna and French ultramarine.
just a tiny bit of darkness down on the bottom right hand corner. And then we let that dry. That boat doesn't need any more work to it. Here, this sail is a very pale beige. Let's just start with some raw sienna. And we'll dull that off to this gray. It's a little bit lighter down here, so I'm going to just lift some of that. But let me go and dry this little area here so I can finish that sail. All right, so this is dry now, dry enough. I don't want this sail to be totally black, however. Now we can do this sail here. And I want just a very, very, very weak uh, beigey mixture. This is too strong. When I say beige, it's just a warm brown, right? But incredibly weak, just enough to take the starkness off the paper. And then some of this comes all the way around here. And I'm just going to darken that 
just a tad. Now we've got hints of uh, creases, so I'll just may drop in some of that up here. This has all these other marks and things on it, so I need a grey for that. Sometimes I'll, I'll mix my darks with French Ultra in burnt sienna. But sometimes I do that and, and I look at the colour and I think it's a bit too warm, meaning there's a, a bit too much red in it. So you'll quite often see me pick up a little bit of the cobalt blue to cool that down. And, and right now that's too bright. When that dries, I'm going to give it a very, very pale grey uh, glaze over the top. And I can paint this red boat in the distance now. So I'll use some Scarlet Lake, a little bit of French ultramarine. Waiting for that to dry, so we'll just do the hulls. The backs of the boats tend to be a bit lighter than the hulls, so what I'll do is I'll mix up the very pale violet.
So that's just my lighter tones. Let me just dry that. This is not the last colour for the hulls. Just this little bit of blue, just a hint of boat that's in the distance. And just some of this darker French ultramarine and burnt sienna mixture. They're already there in pencil, so sometimes I'll just leave the pencil marks. And the figures I'll do later, they all come in after I've done the water. If I put them in now, they'll be washed away. I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've got there at this stage. We've got some lovely light on this sail here. Great. If we have a quick look at the photo, so we're reflecting the sky and we're reflecting the boats, but those reflections are modified by the colour of the water itself, which has a slightly greenish tinge to it. So I'm going to mix a grey with a little bit of cobalt turquoise in it for my water. Mainly French ultramarine, burnt sienna, tiniest amount of pink. More burnt sienna. But I'll now add some cobalt turquoise to it. And I think that'll be good enough for the water. And before I touch the painting, I'll, I'll mix the sand colour because I'll have the opportunity to create some sort of softer transitions. So the sand, I'll start with just a weak raw umber.
The other thing to note, in the distance, the water is actually lighter than it is here. So we're going to have some variation in the tone. So I've got this mixture. I'm going to take out some of the moisture from my brush and then just dip it in the water to give me a lighter tone. Paint right through the figures. And I paint all the way across with that same tone. which means you need to have plenty of paint in your brush. It's not a lot of dry brush in the distance. And now pick up the paint. This is thicker paint. Take out only a little bit, again dip it, tip in the water, just to start darkening it, maybe a little bit more water. Now this is the tricky part, we're going to paint up to the sails, leave the paper white for the time being. You have to keep this leading edge wet or you get a hard edge there. Now we'll go into thicker paint. Now these rocks, this is one of the reasons I drew the rocks in, I wanted to be able to create the odd little bit of dry brush near them and maybe even on them.
Now I want to go in and do these reflections while this area is still wet. pretty quickly for this. If you want, get yourself set up well beforehand with little puddles of all these colours. Now, that's the colour of the sail, but it's modified by the colour of the water. So I've mixed the colour of the sail. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, water colour into it. and it gets lighter as it moves closer to the shore because the depth of the water is getting shallower, obviously. I'm gonna use something similar, maybe just a bit stronger in tone. That's way too strong. So when you, you know, when you pick up a colour and you think it's too strong, that's where you stop. You don't keep playing with it. The cad yellow, I'm going to mix with some of this raw umber to dull it, because remember it's, the reflection is going to be duller. And then this pale grey, it's just a beige, uh, which I'll dull with this. And then this should have come in a bit more. And I need to give that a light spray. Don't have to worry about getting water on the sky as long as it's not too much water because that's all dry. But here, just this area was just drying that little bit too quickly for me. And that's good. Now this is I don't want to lose all the light here, but I can't leave it white, obviously. So I'm going to start with a very weak water mixture and get rid of this. Gap some of that over here and add a little bit of raw umber to it. Okay, so that's good for the reflections of the boat. Quite happy with that. I'm gonna just, I know you can't see it in the photo. I'm gonna put a little bit of the red there. And there's some nice light on the water. This is all wet. I've got time to sort this out. Now we'll let that dry before I go in and do the hulls and their particular reflections because I'm quite happy with this.
make this a bit darker. This little guy would have a little reflection too. You can't keep fiddling with these, that's the only problem, or you, you will lose that lovely, clean reflection look. Too much of the water's bleeding into here. I'm going to just clear some of this off. Let's get some clean water, run that down. And we'll let that just run off for the time being. I'm going to get rid of some of this excess moisture here. And I'm going to lighten some of these areas. The water should be lighter as it gets closer to the shore. The only problem with the lifting is you do get rid of some of the granulation. I don't want to lose all of that. And I can get it back by giving it a light spray. So now I'm going to dry this. There's just too much water there. If I keep playing with it, I don't want any more of this to come down here. So I'll just give it a dry and then we'll do the rocks and then we're done. There we go. All right, so this is dry enough for me to finish this off now. Um, and I'm going to start by, I want to just wrap up these boats so I do the rocks first, I'm just going to put my hands in the, uh, the wet paint. So let's have a look at the hulls. Just a dark grey. I don't want to make them too dark, but... Here's the odd little highlight. And then I'm going to just hint at their reflection of the hull. It's just a little bit darker there. That'll do. And then while that's wet, while the hull's wet and the reflection's still a little bit wet, I'll pick up just a very dark very thick mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And right and just put that right at the water's edge. If it's too thick, it doesn't come off the brush. And that is what connects the hull to the water. In this distant boat, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Let's 
hint of its reflection. and then I'll just soften that, just so the reflection of the hull and the sails merge together. You can, have, you can have little bits of white around the hull, which will read as just foam. Then back to my Mitch Alterine and Burnt Sienna. And around the edge of the boats, just give them a little bit more decoration. Just some of this grey with some French ultramarine. I want to keep the reflections quite soft, giving us that glow. Let's throw a few people in, otherwise these sailboats are sailing themselves. Really just some dots and dashes here. Just lightening the hulls a little. The 
is already quite a dark mixture, so I might as well mix my rock colours with that. French ultramarine and burnt sienna will do. Maybe a tiny bit of permanent rose just to warm them up. That's why we left all that white there. Don't want to overdo these rocks. I'm just going to lighten this rock here a little bit and give it a bit of a reflection. Just little wavelets, I suppose you'd call them, coming into the shore. Now the water's pretty calm, so there's not a lot of dry brush white foam yet. breaking up the sand. And let me just give this a hint of a shadow. Still not happy with the water line of the boat, so I think I just went in a bit too much water. Get a little bit of moisture, and drop some rain, burn sienna.
Now, when I first saw this photo, I was drawn to these colours and their lovely reflection. Because you don't often see good reflections on water. We tend to add them and exaggerate them just for compositional purposes. That's really what I kept working in, in my mind, making sure I didn't lose that. The main thing when you do the water, and you sort of got to do that water in one go, which means is you've got to keep plenty of water underneath to keep it workable. I did end up giving it a light spray at, at one point, but you can't keep going back in or you'll, you'll create mud. Some of you will do that, that's okay. That's just part of learning. But if you can resist that temptation, then that's great. 